Hello, and now we will be creating CDT for the table which we have created in previous lecture. And there is again I need to create on click on this new and I need to select my data type. Data type is the custom data type which we are creating right now. So now we have multiple options to create that data type, right? We can create it from scratch or we can duplicate the existing data type which we have seen in other objects also. But we have few other options like uh, create from database and the X import XSD. So what are these options? We will be understanding these things before getting into this option. There are one. There is one thing which we need to understand first. And th that thing is basically the approach which we need to follow while creating the CDTs and database tables. So if you can see this table which we have created in previous lecture. We have created the database table first and then we are now creating the CDT. So this approach is called bottom to top approach. And if we will create a database table first and then CDT that is a bottom if we will do the opposite thing. For example, if we create the CDT first and then we will move forward with the database table creation. So that is the top to bottom approach. So which approach we need which we need to follow and we need to understand this which we need to follow which is the best approach. So the best is bottom to top and there is a reason behind it right because there is there are certain configurations which we can do in the database but in CDT creation it is difficult to do that right because there are limited options in the selection of database type and the data type column data type right. Because I will show you how we can create the CDT. We will see that later on, right? So, what we will do now, because we have already created the database table, I just need to click on this third option and I need to select my data source. As you all are aware, that uh, my data source is JDBC Appian. And you can see there is one more data source which is coming from the connected system. So, if we are using some external data source, then this option will come. But if you are not using any, then this automatic connected system will come, which is JDBC Appian Tomcat. So I need to select this one. And uh, after that, I need to select the schema. This one table or view. And what is my table name? My table name is, is ET and ET expense data. So this is how we just need to select the data source and table and I will continue this. After that we need to put the namespace and in the namespace we will use the application prefix. So why we are using this because whenever we are writing type bank which we will be using to access the custom data type then we will be using only the data types which we have created for our application. So that's why we have directly put the application prefix in my CDT. And the name of the CDT which I have put it exactly same as the database table and then the description we can give right now I'm not giving any description and uh, this is my column names which is coming from the database and this is my field name which will be which we will be using for CDT. So what I will do it's a best practice also we will make both of them as similar name. So in future we will not be confused about these names. Because these are the keywords which we need to use when we are referring these fields, right? For example, we are filtering out some data with these fields, then we need to write the field name at that time. So what I will do, I will make both of them as similar. So whatever name we will be using, it will be similar everywhere. And this is what I've done. That's all. And now I will uncheck this option. I will explain this option to you. And we don't have to do anything because already the configuration we have done in the database table, right? And I just need to click on create. So this is how we need to create the CDT. And now there is one thing which we need to understand because we have created the table. We have also created the CDT. Now how these two things are attached, how we will make sure that this CDT is referring to this data table. So what we need to do to check the mapping between both of them, we need to create data store, this one. Data store is used to check mappings of the CDT with the database table. 
and in an application there can be multiple CDT but the data store will always be one. Maybe if we are using some some different components then we can create multiple data store but but it's it's best to create a single data store right because in a data store we can create a number of data store entities which we will be creating data store for expense tracker and the data source is again we need to specify because if we are having different different data sources then for that we need to create different different data stores so for my example my data base which is already there i will use this the security and i will click on save and now i need to create my data store entity so this entity which i'm creating i will be using this everywhere wherever i'm fetching the data writing the data and doing anything related to this table right so this is what we need to use so that's why i'm creating this data store entity and um, i will name this again as et expense tracker or the table name is basically expense data so now i need to select my cdt which i have created so my cdt is et this is coming only cdt and save and directly verify and you can see how quick it is i just need to save and publish right so if there is any uh, configuration which is not correct there is anything which is not correct then this mapping will confirm us right and then we need to correct that error so in next lecture we will see how we can update the cdt because uh, uh, whenever our clients say or whenever we have to modify some columns in the database then we need to modify the cdt accordingly and then we need to again check the data store mapping right so let's see that in the next lecture